Welcome to Hazel's Story, an epic saga podcast. And usually, we're here to dive deep into the panels and pages of Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples' comic book masterpiece, unpacking the amazing characters, themes, and weirdness in this grand space opera. Usually, that's why we're here. More on that in a minute. But for now, I'm Alan. And my name's Abu. And... We're here with a bit of a special update for you, our amazing listeners. Yes, if the title and description and length of this episode (laughs) didn't give that away. (laughs) So some of you may have noticed that we did not, in fact, publish an episode of Hazel's Story on our regular semi-weekly release schedule last Thursday. In fact, I know for sure that at least one of you noticed because Twitter user at the stock 12, nice, (laughs) tweeted at us via our podcast network's Twitter handle at lore underscore party. And the stock 12 asked us, quote, when is the new Hazel story episode dropping? With the book on hiatus, I'm experiencing withdrawal already and was very sad not to find a new episode in my feed last Thursday. Well, it's nice to know that uh, listeners are missing us, but also uh, I feel a little called out. (laughs) (laughs) I know it's a mixed bag, right? Like on one, on one level, it's nice. Because it confirms that people are listening and waiting for new episodes, Yep. you know, every other week when we are supposed to drop them. Yep. On another level, it's extremely stressful, too, because it's like, oh, God, people are waiting. Right, right. I don't want to disappoint the people who have grown to enjoy this show. So uh, we appreciate always hearing from our listeners, and we also appreciate folks like the Stock 12 checking in on us and being like, what the fuck, y'all? Where did you go? Right. And look. We're here with somewhat of an answer, or at least clarification, on where we stand and where this show stands. The answer to the stocks WTF question is basically that we have a lot of life things going on. I think it's a bit of an understatement, Alan, to say that you and I are quite busy these days. We have some personal stuff, some work stuff that's really ramping up, and we've realized that we need a bit of a break just to barely have time to spend with loved ones and pets and families and to do things we enjoy more often rather than have our heads down working all the time. And and also just to rest, to pull back the curtain a little bit, I messaged Abu for us to record this and he was asleep on his couch in a (laughs) food coma having just eaten a large dinner and fallen asleep at, uh, oh, it's about 9.15 p.m. So that's where we're at. Yeah. To address all of this, we've decided to take a page from Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples' book and take a bit of time off to make sure that we're able to make the best show possible for you all to enjoy. But don't worry, we won't be gone too long, just a few weeks, so plan on seeing a new episode from us in mid-September as we'll dive into volume six of the story, picking right up where we left off, going into chapters 31, 32, and 33. That's right. And we won't just be back with our usual deep dive episodes. We're actually planning on trying some new episode formats in between those deep dive episodes based on some of the great suggestions that we've gotten via email from listeners like Al and Bailey and Xavier and others. So expect some new types of episodes on the feed coming very soon too. And of course, if you have episode ideas that you would love to hear on this show, remember that you can email us at Hazel's Story at loreparty.com or if twitter is more your thing feel free to dm us at lore underscore party just remember two s's (laughs) the double s (laughs) there are millions of emails floating out in the ether it's true all of them going to hazel story at (laughs) loreparty.com no it's hazel's story it's her story and one more thing we were thinking it would be a little bit messed up for us to just like leave you without something else to read besides saga since we're taking a break though perhaps you could use that time to just catch all the way up to the current issues of saga maybe just a thought Mm -hmm. maybe however (laughs) we thought we could also talk about other work from brian k vaughn and fiona staples that's not saga that uh you all could check out while we're on break and I've read a bunch of Brian K. Vaughn's work. I've checked out some of Fiona Staples. Abu, I don't know how much of uh, the other stuff from either of them you've managed to check out over the years. I believe the only other Brian work I've read is Why the Last Man. And actually, the that's the first Brian work. Like, I read Why the Last Man many, many years ago. And then that 
I believe was my gateway into Saga as well. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty familiar story. Why the Last Man was like this epic, huge deal and then, you know, ran for the full 60 chapters, 60 issues. And a lot of folks were like, what the fuck, Brian? Um, and then, you know, a couple years later, he came back with Saga. That's definitely one of my two uh, most favorite Brian Kavon non-Saga works. The other one is a book from a little earlier in the 2000s called Ex Machina, hmm. which is a very strange story of a man who inherits the ability to control and talk to machines with his mind via an alien asteroid that falls to Earth Ooh. that enables him to sort of kind of stop 9-11 from happening. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And then as a result of that, he gets elected mayor of New York instead of Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> this all really happens in Ex Machina. It's a bizarro story. It's a combination of like political thriller plus superhero drama plus alien stories. It has a lot of those same elements that you get in Why the Last Man or also in uh, Saga, really, where it's like an incredibly good story set in like a weird parallel version of Earth where very strange things happen to very ordinary people and then shit gets wild. So if you're looking for something else to read check out Why the Last Man or Ex Machina from your local library. I also wanted to mention Paper Girls. I actually never finished reading it for whatever reason. I got distracted or dropped off. I think I only read the first volume or two. Mm -hmm. And the comic has actually been adapted to the screen as well. I believe it just came out last week or this week. Mm -hmm. So that might be fun to revisit the comic and watch the show alongside it too. Absolutely. I will say I was skeptical of Paper Girls because I tried to enjoy the Why the Last Man adaptation that was on FX. And it was, <laughs> it was, it was an attempt. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'll okay. say. It was an attempt. Yeah. But on the Paper Girls side, I have uh, a couple of friends whose taste I trust that are a couple episodes in and they say it's good. It's got good scores on Rotten Tomatoes, all the all the signs that something is, is pretty awesome. So yeah, definitely go read Paper Girls. I actually have to confess, I also didn't finish Paper Girls because I think it I think it got too weird. I think towards the end I like lost the thread because mm. reality starts shifting around and time travel goes awry. So definitely check out the beginning of Paper Girls, Why the Last Man, Ex Machina, all amazing comics. Brian has now adapted two of his popular comics mm -hmm. to the screen i don't want to get anyone's hopes <laughs> up but if one of them is a hit and does well maybe we'll get saga yeah i mean if you had told me that they were going to adapt paper girls to a streaming show like five years ago i would have said that doesn't make any sense because the book is too weird but they did it <laughs> and that's often the criticism for potentially adapting saga is that it's too weird and you couldn't possibly right. make it work on the screen but apparently they're doing it and then of course Brian's better half, in my opinion, Fiona Staples. Fiona was slightly newer to the comics world when she started doing Saga, so she has less other work to dig into and dig through. But I just wanted to call out one thing of hers that I stumbled across recently, which was I was reading through this awesome anthology series of Viking-era stories called Northlanders, which is written by another genius Brian, Brian Wood. And right there, in volume five of Northlanders, there was a single issue titled The Sea Road, drawn by Fiona Staples. I like was hey. flipping through the volume five and I turned the page and there was a Fiona Staples cover. And I was like, I know that. Wow. And it was surreal actually to see like her very unique style of drawing, painting, but instead of it being like magical spaceships and wild aliens, she's drawing Viking sailors on longships. And it's worth checking that issue out just to see what she does with water and the way that she captures the fluidity of water and ice in those sort of like Scandinavian spaces. So it's Northlanders, volume five. There's a single chapter called The Sea Road. Uh, I know that's very specific, but <laughs> it's beautifully drawn by Fiona. If you can track it down, it's definitely worth your while. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, there you go, folks. We wanted to leave you with some reading recommendations. And of course, we want to hear what you're reading as well whether it's more Brian and Fiona works or other comics or other books. Mm -hmm. So Hazel's story at lauraparty.com. Don't forget the double S. And uh, that's it. We'll talk to you in a few weeks. Um, we hope you get to enjoy the rest of your summer as much as we're going to try to. I'm personally actually going to Norway, Sweden, and Finland with my family in an attempt to, I don't know, go above the arctic circle and have some sort of wild adventure do you have anything fun planned for the rest of your summer abu i'm going back to sleep <laughs> <laughs> the food coma is still strong 
I've recorded this mid food coma. All right. Well, I am. <laughs> I am impressed at how long you've hung in there, and uh, <laughs> we'll talk to everyone soon. We'll see y'all soon.